Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and we are back with yet another video talking about the upcoming training camp for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. In the last video, we looked at battles to keep an eye on going into training camp. Today, we're going to be talking about players to keep an eye on going into training camp, and I've tried very hard to pick players who were different from the players that I mentioned in the battles to keep an eye on. There are a couple of repeats, but overall, the majority of them are different players if you guys are new go ahead and subscribe and if you like this type of content hit the like button and leave a comment down in the comment section below that'd be greatly appreciated but let's get started talking about the first player on my list it is Buccaneers wide receiver Tyler Johnson and there has been so much hype surrounding really the entirety of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver core, and it's completely understandable. You have Mike Evans, you have Chris Godwin, you have Antonio Brown, you have Scotty Miller, you have Tyler Johnson, you have Jalen Darden, you have Jadon Mickens, you have all these wide receivers. Like, holy crap, the Buccaneers have so many stinking wide receivers. But I do want to say that there has been a considerable amount of hype surrounding Tyler Johnson. He made a couple of pretty decent plays throughout the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playoff run, and a lot of people were very excited when the draft pick was made last year. And it's completely understandable why Tyler Johnson is a very, very, very balanced wide receiver. Uh, he can do a lot of things well. He's a solid enough route runner. He's got good hands. He's got good feet. He's got good speed. Like, you name it, Tyler Johnson's pretty darn good at it. He can do a lot of great things. A lot of people have been pegging Tyler Johnson to be the future successor to say Chris Godwin. I don't know if that's going to end up being the case because I do think a long-term deal will get done at the end of the day. But the reason I have Tyler Johnson pretty much number one here on the list, or not number one in any specific order, but the first guy I mentioned here is because yeah, Tyler Johnson, he's got a lot going for him. It's going to be fun to watch him catch passes from a litany of Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterbacks, Tom Brady, Blaine Gabbert, Kyle Trask, Ryan Griffin, like you name it, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. So let's just see Tyler Johnson work. Let's see him continue the momentum that he built for himself in last year's playoff run. And uh, yeah, let's just, let's just keep on watching Tyler Johnson do Tyler Johnson things. Number two on the list is we have Jalen Darden. And this one should come as no surprise. Ever since the Tampa Bay Buccaneers drafted Jalen Darden just a couple of months ago in the fourth round, everybody was freaking out about how good Jalen Darden was going to be. And yeah, so far up to this point, he has been exactly as billed. He has been absolutely knocking it out of the park in OTAs, in rookie minicamp, in mandatory minicamp. Like Jalen Darden has been that dude. I think that I would probably even go so far as to say that Jalen Darden has been the most impressive guy on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers throughout this entire process. Besides maybe a couple of other guys, uh, say on defense or something along those lines, which we may get to a couple of those in a little bit, but Jalen darren has been phenomenal. He really has been awesome. He's getting going as a returner. He's doing great, great things as a wide receiver. He's going to be an absolute spectacle to keep an eye on. And uh, yeah, he is one of those guys that you peg as the future of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers wide receiver room, in my opinion. Coming in at number three, we have Kyle Trask. Pay attention to the Trask master, guys, okay? He's going to be getting a lot of work. Uh, in the quarterback reps and training camp, we've seen him do, you know, some pretty good things, both, again, in all the other practices that I mentioned before training camp, OTAs, mini camps, things along those lines. Uh, Trask has done some good things. He's done some not-so-great things, but... Overall, I think he's done more good than bad. He's got a ton of guys working with him. Bruce Arians, Tom Moore, Byron Leftwich, Clyde Christensen. All of these guys are in Kyle Trask's ears, giving him advice, coaching him up, and it's been great to hear about so far. So to be able to go and see Kyle Trask practice in person and finally get to some preseason football, that's going to be a lot of fun. That is going to be absolutely awesome in my opinion, and uh, I can't wait to see it. I've been talking about it all offseason, and we're finally going to get to see it. The Jalen Darden to Kyle Trask uh, link up, if you will, the combo, if you will. We're finally going to get to see it in preseason, and uh, and it all starts in training camp, and I can't wait. I'm absolutely pumped. So, Kyle Trask, hopefully the eventual successor to Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers future franchise quarterback. Let's pay attention to how the young guy does. Coming in at number four, we have Cameron Kinley. Now, I did mention him in my previous video, but I will say it again, Cameron Kinley, it's just a really cool story, right? He 
you know, was doing some really good things in mini camps and OTAs, but then, you know, the Navy said, ah, sorry, Cameron, you can't, you know, continue to play in the NFL. You have your obligations to the Navy. Everybody was very upset about this. You know, obviously Cameron Kinley, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the fan base, but then boom, the decision was reversed and Cameron Kinley is coming back to play. And I'm excited because again, he did some very good things, both as a corner and as a special teams player uh, leading up to training camp. So I want to see how Kinley makes the most of this opportunity, you know, his chance to uh, continue his NFL career. I think he's going to make the most of it. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments section below. I would love to hear it. He's got great size, good speed, good, you know, instincts, good awareness. I think that Kinley really can be a solid guy, a solid competitor for that fifth cornerback spot that is a big battle going on right now. So, uh, I love it. I think it's just the perfect package, a good player, a great story. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just fun and heartwarming to see, you know? Number five, I've kind of cheated a little bit on this one. We have Grant Stewart and KJ Britt. I just decided to put them both here because really in terms of, uh, you know, most coverage on these guys, they've been packaging them together for the most part. It makes sense considering both guys have just been playing next to each other and not coming off the field during practice for the entirety of this summer because they don't have any backups. Again, I'm biased towards both these guys, to be completely honest, because Grant Stewart, he's been on the channel. We had a great interview with him. Go check it out uh, back in the channel. And then KJ Britt has even made a small cameo here on the channel as well. So I love both these guys. I think both these guys can be great linebackers. They have just oozed leadership since they have joined the team. And uh, both of them have been making plays. Grant Stewart has been getting loads, and I mean absolute loads, of coverage and love from uh, all the writers out there covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I think it's wonderful to see. KJ Britt has also been getting a lot of love as well. I believe he was relaying plays from Todd Bowles um, throughout mini camps and OTAs. He had that green dot on his helmet. So that just shows that a lot of trust and faith has been placed in KJ Britt and in Grant Stewart as well. Again, both those guys aren't coming off the field. They're playing absolutely every single play. It's great experience. It's great exposure for both of them to really show what they can do. And I think they're going to continue to do that. I can't wait to see both those guys interact with all the starters. Uh, it's going to be wonderful. And I'm so proud and happy for both those guys. Finally, guys, some of the honorable mentions that we have here, we have John Mulshawn, Sam Renner, Calvin Ashley, all three of those guys are friends of the channel. I just think that they all are going to be very solid competitors for backup position battles here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You also have Joe Tryon and Robert Hainsey, who Robert Hainsey, let's talk about him first. The dude has been playing at center. It's been something that we've been talking about all summer, and he's been working with AQ Shipley basically every single chance he can get. And I'm really pumped about Robert Hainsey. Like, I know Ryan Jensen, he's on an expiring deal. I think that there's a decent chance that he is going to get re-signed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but I'm very excited about the future prospects of Robert Hainsey. Like, I really do believe in him. I have a lot of faith in him. He comes from Notre Dame, a great school that produces a lot of good offensive linemen, and I think Hainsey can be the next line of a great center play if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers do have to get rid of Jensen. I'm pumped about him. And then Joe Tryon, yeah, of course we should all be paying attention to Joe Tryon. The first round pick for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I didn't have him on the main list right now because I thought it'd be a little too obvious to include Joe Tryon. I didn't want to include basically the entirety of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers most recent draft class. But yes, of course, we should all be paying attention to Joe Tryon. He's healthier now. He did have that minor knee issue that he had worked through. And this is really going to be the first chance that we are going to see a fully ready to go, fully healthy Joe Tryon start practicing and getting ready for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which should be good. Um, he's not automatically pegged in that third pass rusher spot right now because you know, you know how coaches do. They say, oh, well, you know, he's a rookie, so he's going to be put down towards the bottom of the depth chart. And actually, in all honesty, Anthony Nelson's been making some good plays as he's been one to do in off seasons past. So we'll see where Joe Tryon ends up, be it the third pass rusher or the fourth pass rusher. I think he is going to end up as the third pass rusher, but I'm just excited to watch him be fully healthy, be ready to go, and uh, just do awesome things. I think he will be a very productive pass rusher for this team. I think he's got great speed, great power, great pass rushing ability. And just to watch him learn and interact with Jason Pierre-Paul and Shaq Barrett, 
That's absolutely wonderful in my opinion. Also, let's just throw in Vita Vea, and I know that that's another obvious one, but Vita Vea is an absolute, absolute brick wall monster of a human being, and I just love watching him just bulldoze through people. So, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. What do you think about all the players that I mentioned? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. What are some other players that you guys are going to be paying attention to going into this upcoming training camp? Again, let me know down in the comments section below. Very excited, guys. Very, very excited to get all this training camp content out for you. It's going to be a lot of fun covering this training camp and just, again, seeing who does good, seeing who grows and progresses through these battles and uh, just overall improves as we get closer to preseason football, which I'm very pumped up about, and eventually regular season football as well. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.